Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad, and in today's video we're gonna be discussing cores. We're gonna be discussing how we can actually utilize them and why do we need them inside our .NET Web APIs. We're gonna be seeing the main benefits of cores and we're gonna be seeing the different configuration that we can actually implement inside our API so we can actually facilitate the communication between our APIs and our clients. So first of all, let us understand the problems that core solved. So let's start right now. So what I have here is, let me add a first a rectangle. So this is gonna be my API. So I'm gonna put here API. And inside my API, and basically the API is gonna be responsible for serving all of the different information that's needed to the client. So I'm gonna have also a database, which is gonna be responsible for providing or storing all of this information. So here I'm gonna have a database and all of the information that's needed between the API and the database is gonna be going from like this for example so my api will request information from my database and what i'm gonna also have i'm gonna have a lot of different clients so i might have here my first client which is going to be a blazer application and my blazer application will be basically responsible for uh, communicating with my api and getting requests i might have here a angular app for my admin section for example this could be for my clients this could be for my admin i could have a different one here for a mobile app so as we can see here that these are the different clients that i can actually have so here we can have these are the clients and the clients could differ so for example, for my uh, admin, which is gonna be in Angular, I can have all of the different requests that I want to put, uh, update, delete, anything that I want. But for my Blazor, I could only want get, for example. For my mobile app, I can specify different requirements. So what's happening here? So my application is gonna do the clients, we're gonna do a request for my APIs, and they're gonna be requesting new information depending on the user action. Let's fix this arrow. Perfect. So now I have these three different clients uh, running and I have my API. So my API, for example, it could be running on port, let's say for this, uh, for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna put HTTP forward forward slash localhost on port, for example, 5,300. So this is where my API is running. But at the same time, my Blazor application could be running on port 5,000, which is a completely different domain. My Angular application could be running on a completely different browser, like uh, let's say uh, 6,330, 6, for example. My mobile application, it could, be, it could have been connecting from a completely different, let's say this one, 9,000. So we can see here that I have one domain, two domain, third domain, and I have my API domain. By default, the API will not gonna be allowing any request coming in from any endpoint or from any different domain other than itself. So whenever a client is trying to do a call to my API without a uh, without the same domain, it's gonna be blocking that request. So basically, if I, right now, if this actually my, my client is trying to do the call to my API, it's gonna be rejected because it's coming from a different domain. Similarly to my Angular application, complete different domain is going to be rejected. Similar to my mobile app, complete different domain is going to be rejected. So we can see here that in this scenario, uh, the clients, there is no way they will be able to communicate with my APIs to get the data from the database. So what do we need to do? In order for us to resolve this, what we need to do is we need to actually tell the API that it needs to actually identify that there's a client that's going to be communicating with it and this client is going to be coming from this domain so it needs to allow it and this is where cores come into place cores basically stand for cross origin resource sharing because basically origins means here domains so cross domain resource sharing so whenever we have a cross domain call it means that we are allowing the request to pro to be processed from inside our APIs, and this is going to be the main uh, the main idea that we're going to be working with. We are actually allowing that different clients from different domain to communicate with our APIs and actually getting the response. So let's see how we can implement this example within a Blazor application and our web API. So let me go to a rider. 
and inside Rider here, let us see what do we have. We have a very simple web API, and as we can see here inside, we have two controllers. We have a driver's controller and achievement controllers. We can see that the information is coming from a SQLite database. Inside our program.cs, the only thing we're doing here is we're getting a connection string to our database, and we're actually injecting it to our uh, application DB context. And that's just, uh, all of the other stuff is basically just boilerplate code. On the other hand, for my client application, I have here a Blazor web application with the few pages in so we can see we I have my home page I have my drivers page and I have page to add a driver so let's see it in action so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna run my API so I'm just gonna put dot not run perfect I can see here my API is running on port 5301 I'm gonna also run my client app so dot not run again we can see it's running here on port 5000. So I have already already two different endpoints or different domains, port 5000 and 5301. So now if I try to open my client application inside my web browser, so let me go to my web browser here. Let me put the endpoint and let's go to it. We can see my Blazor app runs. So this is the homepage. There's no API calls. But if I go to, let's see, let's see network here and I go to drivers. We can see here there's a lot of stuff not working. Uh, I'm getting a lot of errors. If I go to console, we can see that the first pro, uh, error that I have uh, seen here, we can see cross origin request blocked. The same origin policy disallow reading. So basically what it means here that the actual API had received that request uh, from uh, the 5000 domain from the client blazer application and basically said this is a completely different domain i'm not allowing any requests coming in so it's it, it completely blocked it and it returned that access control allow origin or basically cores is not actually there uh, the policy is not there to allow it so i'm gonna be blocking it so now let's see how we can resolve this so let's go back to rider and what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna start adding this configuration of course inside my program.cs and it's gonna be pretty straightforward the first thing that we need to do is before the builder.build we need to add the policies here and the way that we're going to be utilizing this is we're going to be relying on the builder those services in order for us to inject cores so let's see how to do that so we're going to put builder dot services dot add course so now that we have basically told our application that we're going to be utilizing course now we need to specify the options in order for us to add the different rules so i'm going to put options here let me fix this perfect and now inside my options i need to define my policies so because if i go back to my diagram here every single one of these clients could have a different policy so this one will have a policies this one will have a unique set of policies this one will have a unique set of policies i can have one policy which is cover all of them but that's not really good practice because it will uh, basically generalize all of those uh, requests when it comes to cores and i will not uh, gonna be able to have a granular control on which clients can do what and it can lead to different problems so it's always good to have a unique policy that's gonna be uh, uniquely identified to a single client so let's see how we can add a policy. So in order for us to add a policy, I'm going to put options dot add policy. So as we can see here, I can see I have two options. I have the add policy and I had default policy. Default policy will mean that it's going to be for every single client that exists. Add policy is going to be for a unique one. So I'm going to utilize this one. So the first thing that I need to provide is going to be the policy name. And for this policy name, I'm just going to provide it as a Blazor app. And then once I specify the, Blazor, the policy name, what do I need to do? I need to provide the configuration and the ruling for this specific policy. And to do this, I'm going to have to do builder. Actually, let's put it on a new line, policy builder. And we can specify it here. So within this policy builder, we are actually allowed to configure this. So let's put policy builder dot. And here we can see that all of these configuration that are allowed to me. So let's see, let's start first with specifying the URL. So I'm going to put with origins and the with origins means here is going to be what is the domain that this policy is going to be catering to and if we take a look at our client we can see that's going to be on local uh, host 5000 so i'm going to copy this and i'm going to put it here and i'm going to remove this at the end so this is going to be the first one then i'm going to put policy builder dot 
Now, what do I want to do? I want to basically allow any header. I want to allow any method. So allow any, any header here means that no matter what the header request coming in, I can allow them. So that I'm not doing any spe any uh, security handling. So here, for example, I can force it to have a unique API keys inside my header in order for it to pass the authentication, etc., etc. I can have, for example, a specific configuration that actually uh, validate that this is coming from a valid uh, client, not a spoofed client. So that can also happen in the header but for now for simplicity sake we're doing any header then i'm gonna put policy builder dot uh, allow any method so this means that if i'm doing post get uh, put delete everything's gonna pass i can basically prevent the allow any method here and actually specify that i can only do get or i can only do post again for simplicity sake we're doing for anything and then i'm gonna put policy builder dot and if I go down here, allow any credentials and this allow any credentials for testing purposes. If there's any types of credential that my API relies on, I can directly allow any credentials combination and it will pass. But in real time, in real case scenario, we should not have that in place. So this, for example, here, I created my policy for my Blazor application. So this is my first policy. But right now, what happened if I want to go and add a policy for my Angular application? How can this work? Pretty straightforward, it's gonna be similar again. I'll put options, dot add policy, and here I can specify the policy for my, for example, uh, Angular app. And then similar policy builder. And I can specify the same policies over and over again. So if I copy this, for example, I don't have an Angular app, but I'm gonna create a random domain for it. So I'm gonna put, uh, 6,900 uh, for example and again and again so now that I have specified all of these configurations inside my application let me stop these this is not this is not enough for my application to work so what I did here is I actually told my .NET application that there is going to be a course ruling that you're going to be have to utilize and you need to actually uh, make sure that you are processing but this is only providing the information. In order for me to actually activate course, what I need to do is I need to take my policy name and after the builder.build, what I need to do is I need to put app.useCourse and here I need to specify my uh, course uh, policy that I want. And here, for example, if I have a different one, for example, my Angular app, I can put Angular Angular app and here I you can see I have two policies that I'm actually executing so right now I'm only gonna have one and let us let's just do a quick recap so here what I did is I added my rules for my policy I defined it and I told .NET that this is what you need to follow and then here I have activated this policy so when my application is running it will actually go in fetch this configuration for my policies and it actually execute them so now let's run them so both of them are stopped, perfect. So I'm just gonna put .NET run and this is gonna run my API. Perfect, I'm gonna put .NET run for my client, which is gonna be my Blazor application. Both of them are running. Let's go back to my web browser. I'm gonna go to home and click on refresh. We can see everything is happily running. Go to drivers and as you can see directly, I started to get my information from my APIs. If I click on add the driver, I'm gonna hit put here Muhammad. Now on the driver number, let's say 23, and I'm gonna put very simple date of birth, save, and we can see it's actually saving and running. If I go to network, we can see I'm doing all of the calls for my API. I'm getting a get uh, 200, I'm getting a 201 for my post, and basically all of these are actually working as they should be. And this is basically what course allows us to do as a quick uh, integration between different endpoints, uh, between two different domains. And we can see how course actually facilitated this communication and actually gave us control on which client can be able to do what inside our application. I hope this video was helpful. Please like, share and subscribe twice. If you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. Have a great day.